Hey friend, Irko here with The Recording Revolution. In this video, we're gonna talk about stereo placement that can help to get better mixes. Let's go! That magical panning pot is as important as the faders are. In fact, it is a fader. When you're twisting that knob to the left, all you're doing really is reducing the amount of that signal that's going to the right speaker and the other way around. The pen pot is a fader. Gem number one. We don't want our mix to sound like this. We also don't want our mix to sound like this. Now, a lot of virtual instruments come as stereo tracks already, right? So they're supposed to be wide. So one would think, well, I'm using wide instruments, therefore I have a wide mix. That's not how it works. At best, the result of using wide instruments is to give us a big mono kind of effect where nothing really sticks out and the contrast between what's in the middle and what's on the side doesn't really hit us with the effect of having a wide mix. So how do we do this? If we're very selective with what we put in the middle, say like the big stuff, bass, kick drum, snare, lead vocal, all the instruments that we're gonna place around them will, will feel like they're coming from a different space, and they are. If they're coming from the stereo field, they're not overlapping the center channel, right? That's the key of it. Now be mindful that if you're placing your guitar far left and your synth far, far right, and our song is being played at the grocery store, you may find yourself at the fruit section here in the guitar and you have to rush all the way to the dairy section to hear the synth. So there's limits to this. Our space in the audio world is finite. So let's sketch it out. Okay, we got left, right, and center. 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Let's start with placing the low end in the stereo field, or not. In fact, I suggest we put it in the center. So imagine if we have our low end on the right. That means that the left channel, the left speaker, the left woofer is not making that low end. And the low end is the most power hungry part of the mix. And we want therefore to use both real estate of both speakers to reproduce that low end. So definitely put it in the middle. There's additional benefits here. For example, vinyl, Needles will tend to skip if the bass is a little more stereo, so definitely not do that. Or another thing that we need to keep in mind is we do not know how the subwoofer may be wired to the system. So what if the sub is connected to the left channel and we have the bass on the right, we're missing out again, you know? So put it in the middle, that's the safest place, all right? Let's add kick drum and snare. And then for the queen of any composition, the vocal would definitely be here. Okay, now let's add, let's say a guitar. We might wanna place the guitar far left, for example, and to kind of balance that, let's add, say a, uh, I don't know, a synth or something on the right. I would suggest to have this balanced where anytime you have something on one side, you have a counterpart on the other side to keep the mix balanced. But again, this could be like a rule that we can break if we wanna convey that tension of having part of the verse, for example, like this until we get to the chorus and we have that big payout. Or with the same sentiment, maybe we wanna keep the verse a little more narrow and then explode super wide in the chorus. That's all in the creativity of uh, the mixer and what we're trying to do. What I've been describing has been the LCR approach, left, center, or right. In other words, when you're thinking of the positioning of whatever instrument you're working with, it should be either in the center or left or right. 100% left, 100% right. Now that's a little bit of a drastic kind of approach. And if you're monitoring uh, your mix only on headphones, it may sound a little too extreme. However, when played back on speakers, that is by far the best way to achieve that distinction of where sounds are coming from which in turn is basically a very wide mix. Regardless of the playback system that you use to monitor your mix, you most definitely need to check the mono to see what's gonna happen in the unfortunate case 
of uh, you know your song being played in mono. There may be some phase cancellation between left and right if an instrument has been artificially made to be stereo with like a chorus or a flanger or something like that. Some funky stuff may happen, so make sure you keep an eye on that. Now, I wouldn't really make drastic decisions based on what the mono playback is giving you, but at least be aware of that. You just never know. Now, up to now, we have been talking about static positionings, but we do have another dimension that we can use. Time. Imagine this scenario. We got the vocal right here in the middle for the verse, and guitar on the left and synth on the right. Cool. Now, what can we do to change that landscape on the chorus? We can, for example, position the vocal in the stereo and maybe put the guitar in the middle and maybe we move the synth down like that. So we go from this to that. That creates a whole new dimension of movement and positioning in the chorus. That's nice. Let's take it to Pro Tools. I'm a plug in now. All right, so this is a consolidated session where I'm showing you I have drums up here, bass here, guitar one, guitar two, electric guitar one, electric guitar two, lead vocal, double one, double two, and harmonies. If I was to just stick to this mix, this will be a pretty narrow mix. Everything is in the middle. So what can we do? Assuming we're not really touching the drums and the bass, this is a consolidated session, like I said. Uh, let's work on the guitars and the vocals. The lead vocal right here should be in the middle at least for now, let's do that. And now we can move the doubles left and right. Nice. Let's do something similar for the two guitars, the acoustic guitars, we'll do left and right and we'll do the same on the electric. So now what we have is the music is always stereo, the lead vocal is in the middle and the doubles are stereo also. Let's do the same for the harmonies. Now this is a nice presentation, nothing spectacular here and it's static obviously nothing is moving if i reveal the automations by doing command control error right you see there's no movements whatsoever imagine this being the chorus and this part being the verse let's switch it up so that we can create a movement what can we do i would start for example to put the verses doubles in the middle so that all vocals are in the center reduce the volume of the lead vocal for the chorus not by much, but so that we have a stereo presence of all the vocals and do the opposite of that on the guitars. So let's say we can put the electric guitars to 30 and we do the acoustics all the way to zero. So now they swap places. Basically, anytime the vocal is loud and proud in the middle, the guitar is on, on the stereo field. And when we get to the chorus, we flip in this scenario and we, now we have the vocals loud and proud in the stereo field and the guitars in the middle. Now you can apply this thought and this philosophy to anything you want really. The movement will generate this, okay, something new is happening here and so you're grabbing the attention of the listener even more, which is a great thing. This is an actual session of one of my mixes and I wanna show you guys that I actually do these things in my mixes. For example, here we got the main guitar and this is the solo, also guitar. And because the solo is a stereo track and I wanna make sure that the solo gets its light, its space and attention during the mix since it only happens for a few seconds, I'm closing in the stereo information of the main guitar. As you can see, as we're going from here, where it's 100 to 100, completely wide, we are getting down to almost nothing and we're leaving that stereo space, that stereo real estate for the solo to happen. Let's go to another one. Here we got two shaker tracks and as you can see, one is louder and more dynamic than the other. So my solution was to move them around. So every four bars, they switch from left to right and right to left. I'm doing something similar with a little percussion here. Again, we're creating movement in the stereo field. Nice. Ooh, here's a favorite one of mine. Guitar, dry, mono signal, reverb, mono on the same guitar, but they're alternating from left to right. So when the guitar, let me show you the faders. Here we go. So when the guitar is 62 to the left, the reverb is 100 to the right, and then they swap position. That's a really, really cool trick. In fact, you can see it on one of my videos on my YouTube channel. 
This one doesn't have so much movement in terms of automations, but I want to show you that this particular track, this is a Rhodes, clearly has a lot of stereo information here. It's probably one of those that goes left to right, but I chose to keep it completely in the middle on the chorus because I have the sample and the main guitar already in the stereo field. So my thinking was, again, I want to either play stuff left, right or center. And if there's too much stuff already going on in the stereo field, I want to occupy the center, which by the way, also has not been occupied by the vocals, which are all stereo. Okay, as you can probably tell, I'm about the philosophies and how we're thinking about these things rather than be quick to reach a plug-in or do this or do that, right? I would like to get you in my mindset so that you can make your own decisions and come up with your own aesthetics. And these stereo philosophies really open up a bunch of other worlds of options and ideas. For example, mid-side EQ or dynamics or whatever, where you're applying a certain treatment only to the side part of the instrument and not the center or the other way around. The possibilities are literally endless. So feel free to dig in and come up with your own things, your own automations, your own fun things to do to your mixes and they will sound fantastic. I have a bonus. This clip comes from one of my documentaries on my YouTube channel and I wanted to show you this as a bonus because this is not a mixing thing really, it's a recording thing. But if there's one thing that's very important while recording drums is to make sure that the two left and right microphones over the cymbals, most likely, are in phase with the center of the snare. It's very simple to do, it doesn't take much at all. All you gotta do is just measure the center of the snare drum to one of the two mics and then make sure you have the same distance from the center again to the other mic. Phase coherency, stereo spread, we got it all in check by doing this. Before we wrap up, I would kindly invite you over to my YouTube channel where I have a new series of videos where I'm showing you how I'm building my new studio. It's gonna be all made of concrete well, the outside shell is. And this week's episode is about the block wall which we use to do all the walls. It's kind of like um, HGTV meets uh, audio nerdy people wearing bow ties, I guess. Check it out. Then from this part to somewhere here in the middle, it is right now filled with concrete. So there's no sound if I bang on it. It goes like, doop, doop, right? But from here on up, which is the new part, this is all empty now. It needs to be filled up with concrete. So that goes like kum kum kum. Remember this? And how I started by saying that we were gonna build this first? Hello, look. Ba -bam! This thing actually exists. I've been walking through this for years in my mind and now I can actually walk it in real life. And it's huge. Look, just to give you a point of perspective, I'm seven feet tall, right? Right. Look how tall this thing is. 